Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, uh, Sports Betting Truth, William Lee, whatever you want to call it. But today I'm doing the first of a video series that I am calling the Reaction Series. And that is a set of videos where I react to other sports betting related videos on YouTube and give my analysis. Now I know what you guys are thinking. You're probably thinking, great, now he's finally going to watch tout videos and absolutely tear them to shreds. And yes, I do plan on doing that. And not just tout videos, but people who have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to sports betting or people who give out crappy advice or self-promoters who are like, do what I tell you to do and you will win lots of money. I totally plan on going after those videos. But first, I thought I'd start this video on a positive note. Someone who did a sports betting related video in a good way, a way where I can say, thumbs up, you did a good job with this video. And that is a video that Daniel Inskeep came out titled, How I Turned $100 into $12,000 Betting on Sports. And here is what I think about this video. In this video, I'm betting on sports. So it's safe to say I don't know much, but one thing I noticed recently is a lot of stock traders like to bet on sports over the weekend just to get their fix. So the first thing I noticed about this video is that he from the beginning, within the first 20 seconds of the video, admits he doesn't know anything about betting on sports. Unfortunately, the average person who's searching for sports betting related content here on YouTube is not going to care. They're going to see the title of this video, how I turned $100 into $12,000 overnight with sports betting. Even though he puts absolute beginner in the title of his video, it doesn't matter. The average chump searching for sports betting material here on YouTube is going to watch this video being like, okay, I want to turn $100 into $12,000. If this guy can do it, so can I. I'm not blaming Daniel Inskeep here. I'm not. He he is doing the right thing. He is admitting he knows nothing about sports betting, but the average person watching this video does not. A few weeks ago on Twitter, I saw someone who bet a few hundred dollars on a parlay bet of NFL games and turned that few hundred into about $80,000. So suffice to say, that kind of piqued my interest. And I imagine that's how it goes for most people who bet on sports. Parlays are the ultimate marketing tool for sports books. I don't even know why they bother with uh, marketing departments and all these advertisements and everything. Just have a bunch of people post slips of their parlay bets on Twitter or something, and you're going to get people coming to your sports books like lambs to the slaughter. Now, parlays, I've said it on this channel many times, they are fool's gold. Everyone says, how hard can it really be to, for example, pick three winners and turn 10 bucks into 60 bucks at 6 to 1 odds? How hard really can it be? Parlays are the ultimate moneymaker for the books, and this guy was sucked in. He was sucked in, you know. Just like everybody else who uh, goes to a sports book, they are sucked in by parlay bets. Even yours truly was sucked in by parlay bets and used to bet a lot of them way back in the day. So I don't blame him. Now, the only sport I kind of pay attention to is pro football, so I'll probably keep my betting in that realm. All right, and once again, he follows the average path of the average sports better by being sucked in by football, specifically NFL. I've always said I could grow my channel a lot more than it has if I talked about NFL and soccer, but I don't. But this guy is sucked in by the two biggest hooks when it comes to sports betting, and that is NFL and parlay bets. A parlay bet is where you link multiple bets together to create a bigger payout. This is how that one guy on Twitter took a couple hundred dollars and took it to $80,000 in one day. So it can be a good way to increase the win amount without increasing. Hang on a second. I want to see what that ticket was. So I'm going to try to zoom in on this. Uh, we got Tennessee Titans spread, alternate spread, Pittsburgh Steelers alternate spread at plus 320. The Titans was plus 330. New York Jets money line at plus 410 against the Bengals, San Francisco 49ers, money line plus 128, and New Orleans alternate spread at plus 280 against the Bucks. So it looks like he made a, I can't tell if that's $100 or $500, uh, but it was to pay $79,000, and they are offering him a cash out of $24,296 at the time because it looks like the first four had hit. So here's the deal with parlay bets is that a lot of people will see this. There's only five games on there. There's only five games, right? But the problem is they are all long shots. They are all, it looks like the most sure thing on that ticket was the 49ers money line at plus 128. That's still less than a 50% chance. And then you have a bunch of plus 300s and even a plus 410 on there. You're talking about realms of 25 to 20% probability. That's pretty much saying I need to roll a dice and it needs to be 
two or less five times in a row. And the probability of that is pretty small. And that's the problem. That's how people get sucked in by these parlay bets is that they see these things and they're like, oh, how hard could that possibly be? I mean, I can turn $100 into $78,000 or $80,000. And that's the thing. Those are insane long shot odds right there. Insane long shot odds to the point where they're even giving them a cash out of 25 grand. I don't think the average person realizes just how mathematically hard it is to hit a ticket like that. That is an almost an equivalent of hitting a massive jackpot at a slot machine. We're talking about fractions of a percent probability here, but the average person doesn't know that. They just say, oh, I just need to pick five winners. How hard can it possibly be? And that's how they get sucked in by parlay bets. So it can be a good way to increase the win amount without increasing your bet amount. Just watch as I add amounts to this parlay and see how every wager can compound the total payout to be enormous. But if just one leg of your parlay fails, then the entire bet is a loss. And that's what I call the parlay fallacy. Um, a lot of people are hooked onto parlays and continue to bet them because they'll, for example, pick a 16 parlay and they'll win five out of six and they'll be like, oh, I just needed one more. But what the average person does not realize is that there, for every additional leg of the parlay you need to win, for example, the difference between hitting five out of six and six out of six on a parlay is substantial. It's massive. It's not a linear relationship. You'll, you'll get a bunch of five out of sixes before you get that six out of six because that additional win you need is very hard. The, the probability of hitting five out of six and the probability of hit, hitting six out of six, it's an ocean of difference. It's a massive gap. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think they're just one win away from getting there. But even getting to the five out of six point is very difficult, but people still get there. And that's the fallacy of parlays is people think they're just one win away from getting that massive payout. And that's how they stay on the hook. All right, so that's my brief summary covering what little I know about betting on sports. As always, treat this video and videos like this purely as entertainment. Do a deeper dive for yourself to make sure you have a firm grasp on everything before you put real money on the line. And remember, that's the thing. People watching this video, the 53,000 people that have watched this video so far, they're not going to do that. They're going to see this video and think, oh, how hard can it possibly be? They're going to be depositing money into the sports book like lambs to the slaughter. But good on Daniel Inskeep for keeping it real and giving that disclaimer. I'm. This is not a video to hate on Daniel Inskeep. I actually think this is a very good video, which is why I picked this to start this reaction series because he does everything right. He says multiple times in this video, hey, this is not the norm. This is not the norm, but it doesn't matter. There are so many desperate degenerates out there. They're going to watch this video and think they can do it. This is straight up gambling. So treat that as entertainment as well. Assume you will lose 100% of the funds you wager. And if you have an addictive personality, this may not be a good idea. Let's check it. If only every other sports betting YouTube video out there, especially the ones that get a lot of views like this, can say the same thing, but they don't. They instead say, oh, it's so easy. Just follow what I do and you're going to win. You're going to win. Just do what I do. Win. Like this guy, this guy has a lot of sports betting truth in his heart and I like him. I like him. Okay, I know absolutely nothing about college football. Nothing. So probably not a great idea to put money on it, but here we go. While browsing through Twitter, I came across this 11 game parlay bet from a stock trader I follow named Mans. If everything hits, $100 would turn into $236,000. So clearly it's a long shot. He also asked his followers what games might cause his parlay to fail. So instead of blindly following this wager 100%, I looked through those comments to gauge sentiment on what people thought and then made a few adjustments of my own. And then semi-blindly, I placed the wager. I took. So he basically went onto Twitter and found some random Twitter tout. I'm not sure if it's a Twitter tout, but just someone who gives up picks on Twitter that gains a following. That's the thing. These people that you see on Twitter that claim good win rates or amazing win rates, they don't know any more or any less than anybody else, right? And the fact that they're giving out a massive parlay as their bets to follow is even worse. Like any any person who's worth a salt when it comes to giving out sports betting advice isn't going to be telling you to give out a parlay bet. I can tell you that right now, especially an 11 team long shot parlay. I mean, at that point, you might as well be flipping a coin because the odds of someone who knows what they're doing and some total rando flipping a coin hitting 11 team parlay are about the same, to be honest with you, because at that point you are entering into diminishing returns where it doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are. It doesn't really matter how good of a model you have or anything like that. To hit an 11 team parlay is going to be blind luck. 
And then he goes and crowdsources opinions from the comments and the Twitter. That's even worse because you're crowdsourcing opinions in None of those people are going to have any idea what they're talking about. They're just going on pure gut instinct. They're not using any models or statistics or any logic or reason to say these things. They're going on what their heart says. And I've always said, if you trust your gut over the odds, if you trust your hunches over the numbers, you're always going to lose. So anyway, he came out with this parlay. Um, it looks like the, it is a money line parlay with a couple of dogs sprinkled in there. The, the odds of a parlay like that hitting are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, even, even the sure things, even the favorites all hitting are absolutely ridiculous. And something like this connecting is just going to be blind luck if it does. The biggest underdog man's pick was Illinois at 520. Taking into account my adjustments, if my 11 game parlay hits, my $100 would pay out $72,000. Pretty interesting. All right, I'm going to give you the odds of something like that happening. You're looking at about a 0.13% chance of that hitting, right? 0.13%. That's why it pays out so much. That's why it's, he's getting such crazy payout from that because th that's, that's a fraction of a fraction percent chance of hitting. And it's a total long shot. It's a Hail Mary. Like that is slot machine progressive jackpot types of odds right there. You probably have a better chance of hitting a Royal Flush in video poker than this parlay hitting. Reddit looking for someone reputable to follow into a few NFL bets. I came across George Kent. Anybody who follows anybody on Reddit. I've been to the sports betting related subreddits on Reddit before. I'm not a big fan of the website for other reasons, but if you're looking for somebody to follow on Reddit, you are stupid because that that place is full, especially the sportsbook sub. It is full of losers and losers that pretend to be winners, people that talk a big game and can't back it up. So this Bambino bets guy, I know who he is. He has no idea what he's talking about. I don't know why he has so many followers. He is a long-term loser. He is a he, he, he gives out his picks on Twitter and pretends that he's some big high roller long shot betting professionally for 43 plus years. But I know who this guy is. He's a fraud. You're not going to win money if you follow him. Don't do it. Ignore the amount of followers he has on Twitter. Ignore the uh, hype and marketing fluff that he gives on his Twitter posts. You're not going to win if you follow him. Or Bambino Bets and found three plays he recommended for Sunday. Also, he does not recommend parlaying these bets, just doing individual wagers. But since I'm only... And that's one thing he gets right. That is one thing he gets right. Got to give credit where credit is due. Never parlay your bets ever if you're if you're serious about winning now if you want to just have fun and you don't care about winning or losing you don't care about profit yeah go ahead and parlay and see what it is but i've always said this about parlays everyone says oh play parlays for fun but what is fun about parlays because more often than not your first leg or two are going to lose and the parlay is finished right you, only a fraction of the time you're going to get far enough into the parlay where it's fun and i believe at that point if you get that far in the parlay that it becomes more stressful than fun because you're thinking about hedging you're thinking about cashing out or letting it ride what's fun about that so absolutely right uh, with bambino bets there don't parlay but this guy's going to do it anyway for my third bet, I looked at a few different sports betting websites where they have their algorithms and AI and simulations and so on and so forth, and I found one more free play. I ended up on dimers.com, and again, they had three picks, choosing the favorite for two and the slight underdog, the Cleveland Browns, for the other one. All right, um, I've said this before, but any website giving out free picks is not worth a salt, especially if they're a touting website, because I've always said if a touting website is giving out free picks, it's because those free picks are designed to lose, so you turn towards their paid picks. You're, you're, they're trying to get you to go up a tier. A lot of these touting websites have different tiers when it comes to picks, and the free tier gets you in the door. And then once those don't work out for you, then you start buying their picks. Now, I don't know if the website he got those picks off was a touting website or not, but if anything is free, it's not worth anything because if these free picks had any value at all, if they were going to help someone win, they would not be given out for free. So I know this guy doesn't know a lot about sports betting. I'm not blaming him. I doubt he knows that. But just for those of you watching this video, free picks will get you nowhere. I checked in Saturday around midday and the heavy underdog Illinois did end up beating Minnesota, which was great, and every other game seemed to just be going my way. In fact, every single game went my way. But then there was Clemson and Louisville. Clemson took the lead in the last few minutes of the game and scored again to shut down the Cardinals, ruining my parlay. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up. Okay, so I just checked in on my parlay. Purdue just won. And now... 
I can cash out for $13,300. So I can take that crazy payout now or wait and see how the three games play out. And if all those teams win, then I'll win $72,000. So it's $72,000 or $13,000. What would you do? So I had a little dilemma on my hands, but of course I had to go ahead and cash out, take the huge win, and I am obviously glad that I did so. This had to be the biggest dose of beginner's luck that I've ever experienced. Yeah, having a good so I think he did the right thing there. Um, he cashed out. And the thing with these cash outs, um, not every book will offer you this. Um, a lot of them will, though, especially if you ask them. Uh, but they're not going to give you fair price on the cash outs because, you know, um, they're, they're going to give you a price that's good, but it's not going to be a fair price, kind of like on Let's Make a Deal. Uh, so his fair price is probably going to be higher than that, probably around 15, 16,000. But I would have cashed out at 12,000 because the odds of even getting that far to where you can cash out those incredible odds right there are very slim. So he did the right thing at cashing out. But that's another thing that these books do to suck you into betting parlays in the first place is they offer early cash outs. It gives you somewhat of like a, a peace of mind. Oh, I can make this parlay and cash out anytime I want. Uh, um, and assuming you're even to get to that point where cashing out makes sense. And that's the thing. It lulls you into a false sense of security. But getting far enough into a parlay to cash out an incredible payout like that is still a fraction of a fraction of a percent odds of getting that far. And so he was absolutely right to say that was beginner's luck because it was. Like I said, even getting that far, incredible luck required. And he just got lucky with some of those games like Illinois. Good for him for saying it's beginner's luck, but the people watching this video are not going to think it that way. They're going to think it's very easy to get to that point where you can cash out for... Um, multiple exponential times of the amount you put down to begin with and they will be like lambs to the slaughter. Again, I can't believe how that worked out and realized it had to be pretty wild probability wise. So shout out to Mans on Twitter and those that commented their thoughts. I thank you. But that's not all. I still have two more bets that I need to check in on. So this is my bet from Twitter's Bambino Bets. The Browns smoked the Bengals, so that was a loss, ruining that parlay. But if I had done individual bets like he recommended, would I have still come out ahead? Well, the Saints also lost by two, and the Packers only scored seven points, so all three of those plays were losers. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, I told you so about Bambino bets. Uh, if you follow him, you're not going to win because three game sample size doesn't really mean anything. Even the best people out there can go 0 and 3 in a stretch. But I'm just saying, you know, um, there is no sure thing. So if you're uh, following these Twitter touts or these Twitter pick giver outers and think that, you know, they know what they're doing and you can put a lot of money, more money than you need to be betting on the games they give out for that day and it doesn't turn out like it wants you to. Joke's on you. Practice good bankroll management and going 0-3 is not going to matter no matter who you follow when it comes to picks. For my final wager, both the Cardinals and Browns won, and again, I had a decision to make. Either cash out before the final game for about $220 or let it ride into the final game. I think if I didn't have such a massive win yesterday, I would have definitely cashed out because it is a great return on my $50, but for the sake of this video and because I'm already sitting pretty, I decided to let it ride. I needed the Rams to win by at least eight points and they sucked big time and lost the game. Bummer. When it comes to the three team parlay, now I don't endorse parlays at all, uh, but if you do make a bet on a parlay and it's a three team, I would just let it ride. I think the cash outs are more meant for those big parlays, you know, the 10 teamers or whatever. That's what the cash outs are for. I would just let a three teamer ride unless it's life changing amount of money, uh, then go ahead and cash out. But otherwise, three teamer, don't overthink it. And he did the right thing. So thanks to that NCAA parlay, I was able to turn my $200 deposit into $12,936 for a 6,368% return on my money just over one weekend. Obviously, this kind of result is very atypical. I still have a hard time believing it myself. I think I'll withdraw $12,000 of it and then just play around with the remaining $900 or so. Absolutely atypical. I mean, I've been betting on sports. I, the first time I bet on sports was in 2011. It's been 11 years, right? Almost 11 years. And I've never had anything like that happen to me ever. Like, n I've never had that kind of luck before. Now, I haven't really bet a lot of bets where I could have some massive return like that. But every now and then I'll put a long shot parlay for uh, shits and giggles. Not even close. The, the biggest parlay I've ever hit was a six teamer and it's only happened twice. And I had like 20 bucks on it. So it's not like I won life-changing amount of money like this guy did. Uh, 
Atypical probably isn't the right word to use. I would say astronomical long shot. And that's the thing that people watching this video aren't going to know any better. And they're going to think it's easy. They're going to ruin themselves trying to chase what he accomplished in this video. And again, I don't really know much about betting on sports. But I said I was a fan of Jerome Bettis, whoever the hell that is. But if you're interested in doing some mild gambling, make sure you do so with money you can afford to lose. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And he ends the video with the perfect advice, only money you can afford to lose. But unfortunately, I keep saying this, I'm a broken record, but it's true that people watching this video are not going to take that advice. They're going to bet with money they can't afford to lose. You see it all the time. That's probably a thing you see on that sportsbook Reddit a lot is people saying, I'm ruined. I bet too much money. How do I quit? Uh, but very typical. If I were him, obviously $200 probably isn't a lot to this guy based on the other videos he has on his channel. But I would just take that $200 out and do something else with it because uh, he's not going to be able to repeat that success. And that $200 is as good as gone, especially because he is a total beginner and doesn't know what he is doing. Uh, but anyway, that is what I think about this video. Good job, Daniel Inskeep. Uh, you're a bigger deal on YouTube than I am. But um, I think this is a pretty good video. You really hit hard on the point that this is beginner's luck. It was atypical. It's not the normal thing to expect when it comes to sports betting. But unfortunately, the people who find your video in search or on thumbnails or whatever are not going to think it that way. And they're going to try to replicate exactly what you did to their own peril. There might be one person who succeeds, but the other 99.9% .9 who tries will fail, unfortunately. So not bad. So I hope that this first edition of the reaction series was a good one. And yes, I do plan on tearing those touts to shred. I do plan on tearing the bad sports betting YouTube videos out there to shreds. But this video was well done. So stay tuned until next time. I can't tell you when the next one's going to come because I am going to Utah next week for a ski vacation. But I do plan on doing more of these videos in the future. Until then, you've been watching me, William Lease, with my channel. Stay tuned until next time.